Okay, real and reactive power control. Okay, uh, now suppose that uh, you have a synchronous machine that uh, is connected to infinite bus, that the voltage is constant, the frequency is constant. And uh, two variable uh, are accessible for us. One of them is the uh, field current, we can change it with the uh, external uh, DC source and the mechanical torque. The mechanical torque that is uh, uh, driven by the prime mover, we can change it, and the field current, we can change it. With the field current, uh, that it's called uh, excitation system control, it's, is used for the reactive power control. On the other hand, we have the torque, uh, mechanical torque. If we change it, we can control active power. In this way, in these two ways, we can control reactive power and active power. We have other kind of equipment that can be used in the power system uh, for the active and reactive power control. And we will talk about uh, them later in uh, next months with the power electronic. However, inside the synchronous machine, we have this opportunity to control them as well. However, how we can uh, control reactive power? Suppose that uh, in the generator, we have this uh, equivalent circuit and uh, there is angle delta, it's the phase difference, angle difference between the terminal voltage, Vt or Va here, and the internal voltage, Ei. The angle difference between them is called delta and delta is very, uh, important parameter uh, and the impedance, synchronous impedance that is R plus J, uh, XD reactance, synchronous reactance. And we can show this diagram that uh, we talked about that before, VT plus uh, RI, the voltage drop. In this case, you neglect the resistance, consider zero. Uh, if you consider uh, zero for uh, resistance, we have uh, uh, terminal voltage plus uh, voltage drop on uh, reactance, synchronous reactance, XD. And it consists of two parts, this one and its perpendicular uh, section that is a uh, uh, sine function of theta and the cosine function of theta. And both of them have um, XD, uh, synchronous reactance, and uh, the current in phase A. And uh, if we calculate the complex power that is called S, uh, we can calcul calculate the complex power that is uh, active power and reactive power with this expression the terminal voltage and the conjugate of the current. And you can see it's the final expression and it's divided into parts. The first part is uh, VT, absolute value of VT, absolute value of current of phase A and cosine function of theta. So the whole part is called active power and the next section will be reactive power is the sine function of theta, Vt and uh, current in phase A. So remember these two expression for active and reactive power. So if you want to control uh, reactive power uh, and with keeping the keeping uh, constant value for uh, active power, suppose that it is active power. If you keep the active power constant, it's the voltage uh, of terminal. Since it is connected to infinite bus, it's constant. However, we have to keep this term constant. And it is the projection of uh, current. Here is current. Projection of the current on the voltage terminal. And this term 
is ein cosine theta. So this is the term we have. If we can keep it constant, we can keep active power as a constant value. So suppose that with this condition, we won't change the reactive power. As we talk, uh, if we uh, keep constant this parameter, we can keep active power constant. However, for the reactive power, we have three uh, type of uh, uh, um, modes. I can say we have three modes for reactive power. We have the underexcited, normal uh, excitation, and the overexcited. The overexcited, uh, we had seen it before. This is the diagram of the overexcited. Uh, it means that it, uh, it supply reactive power for the, the power system, the synchronized machine. Uh, its performance is similar to the capacitor that uh, uh, supply reactive power. And you can see here the uh, EI, internal voltage, is lead, uh, is in front of uh, terminal voltage. This condition is called uh, overexcited and synchronous machine can uh, supply reactive power. However, another uh, mode is normal excitation. And, uh, and here, for example, consider VT and we have EI here. It's the EI. It's the ER. This section is called uh, normal mode, and uh, another one will be underexcited. That means that the generator draw the reactive power and its performance is similar to reactor and uh, absorb the reactive power from the system. And you can see here, and it's the uh, uh, terminal voltage, and here it's the internal voltage, by the current is lead, uh, the, the voltage, the terminal voltage. However, it was lag compared to, compared to terminal voltage. So in different modes, we can uh, supply, suppose that positive uh, reactive power, uh, normal is zero reactive power, and the underexcited is negative reactive power. So we can change the reactive power, in other words, we can say we are uh, controlling the reactive power with uh, uh, changing the, the current of the field. And uh, how we can uh, control active power? So if we want to understand how to control it, we need some mathematical expression uh, and it's related to uh, delta. That's why I, uh, I told that delta is very important. And the delta is the uh, difference between uh, the internal voltage and the voltage of terminal. It's the zero and it's delta. The difference will be delta. And if we uh, calculate the active and reactive power based of the phasor domain, if you calculate complex power based of this uh, parameters, you can see the active power is related to delta. And uh, of course, is related to uh, absolute value of uh, voltage on the terminal and internal and the, the reactants, synchronous reactants. But uh, you, you cannot change this part. And this section is almost constant. Both of them, the amplitude is approximately constant, but it's possible to change the delta. And in this way, you can control the reactive power, uh, control, sorry, the active power. And the last, say, do you have question related to active and reactive power control?
um, it is um, auxiliary service inside the synchronous machine that control the active and reactive over. However, in future, you can learn that with um, external uh, equipment, uh, you can change, for example, you can decrease the impedance of the line. You can, um, uh, you can change the delta with uh, other equipment that not, are not inside the synchronous machine. There are equip other equipment that can help us. Okay, so we will go to the last part, short circuit current. Suppose that you have a synchronous machine and suddenly uh, uh, short circuit happened, occur at the voltage terminal and we want to know uh, what will be the current that goes inside the uh, short circuit. In order, to, uh, in order to understand this uh, part, you have to consider you have a R and L uh, circuit, and suddenly uh, sinusoidal uh, an AC voltage is applied to the uh, RL circuit. If you apply suddenly this voltage, uh, the, the final current consists of two uh, components. The first component is DC, that it decays uh, exponentially and not that it's uh, related to time constant. Uh, what's the value of L and R, the inductance and the resistance? In other uh, terms will be AC component. That is sinusoidal function, that's amplitude, uh, can change in some part and can be considered fixed as well. This, the similar things can happen uh, for the synchronous machine if uh, we have a short circuit at the terminal voltage. And uh, suppose that that uh, we don't have DC component, forget DC component. DC component just create offset for the current. Uh, without DC component, just focus on AC component. Uh, we can show that uh, if you have a short circuit in the terminal of a synchronous machine, this is the amplitude, the amplitude of the AC component. You can see it consists of three terms. And uh, the figure you will, uh, you will see after short circuit, you can see it's a sinusoidal function, but the amplitude is decreasing. And after some time, it will be fixed. So, Three uh, interval is defined uh, for this uh, type of current. The first part is sustain uh, short circuit. Suppose that here, after, for example, here is uh, the const, uh, the, the amplitude of the short circuit will be constant. So, uh, and it, it can be can calculate uh, the RMS value will be from zero to peak and uh, divided by root two. So it's related to a steady state condition. No, it, it can be sustained uh, short circuit current. And we have transient condition here, approximately. It's, it, it is transient current that you can see from all to B over root two, it's the amplitude. And the final will be subtransient, this part. It's the most severe uh, value of um, current in the subtransient that is calculated in this way. So you can see the, the short circuit current consists of three parts. The first part is subtransient. Uh, the current is very high, and then the transient uh, a bit decrease, and finally the sustained currents. So the the amplitude of current will be uh, constant. So for each part, uh, in contrast to um, transfer, you consider uh, one circuit equivalent circuit during the time for the short circuit for the uh, synchronous machine, we consider three interval. And for each interval, we have uh, in uh, related uh, equivalent. 
So for sustained part, it is the equivalent of sustained part. You can see the EI constant and uh, JXD is the synchronous uh, reactance. So uh, it's the equivalent for the um, sustained section. However, for the transient condition, this time, this interval, we have to change uh, and it will be X prime. So we, we, since we have uh, a higher value of the current, so this uh, reactance is uh, smaller than this one because we have a uh, higher value of current. And the, finally, the transient, the subtransient, and uh, it will be X double prime that uh, it call uh, subtransient reactants. Anyway, for three intervals, we have three uh, equivalent circuit and you have to use it for uh, evaluating the synchronous machine during the short circuit. Okay, it was uh, my last slide. And do you have a question? Uh, yes, um, in the uh, uh, exercises. Yeah. Um, how should we know if we have gotten the correct results? Is there any place we can find? Um, um... The answer, the correct answer? Yeah, yeah the correct answer. So because you know, I can... Hmm. Yeah. Th there are some exercises uh, inside the chapter and the all solution are uh, mentioned in the book. So you can follow them and you can correct yourself. Uh, so, but uh, the, the final problem at the end of chapter, uh, I'm not sure you, uh, is there any solve for that, but you can check with Thomas because uh, I'm not responsible of the exercise or maybe uh, Ali Reza who that talk with you later at four and okay. uh, he will explain more, but uh, I know that in the, in, inside the book, there are some exercise uh, during the chapter and uh, there is the full answer and you can follow it. Yeah, I'm thinking more about the problems because we get yeah. uh, a certain amount of problems mm -hmm. to do each yeah. week. So you, ha you have to check with uh, Ali Reza. Okay. I'm not sure to give you correct answer. Uh, anything else? Chats, nothing is here. 